How to Stay Married for Good, Part 1. Why stay married? According to Dr. Martin Seligman, the author of Authentic Happiness, marriage is robustly related to happiness. A survey of 35,000 Americans over 30 years revealed 40% of married people said they were very happy, while only 24% of unmarried, divorced, separated, and widowed people said this. The happiness advantage for the married holds controlling for age and income, and it is equally true for both men and women. Having observed many hundreds of permanently single, unhappily married, separated, and divorced people over the years, I am completely convinced that who you marry is the most important decision you will ever make. A decision more important than your choice of career or even whether to have children. A happily married person travels with a partner who shares all of the joys and grief associated with life's twirling journey. Since 1973, Dr. John Gottman has studied what he calls the masters and disasters of marriage. Ordinary people from the general public took part in long-term studies, and Dr. Gottman learned what makes marriages fail, what makes them succeed, and what can make marriages a source of great meaning. By examining partners' heart rates, facial expressions, and how they talk about their relationship to each other and to other people, Dr. Gottman is able to predict with more than 90% accuracy which couples will make it and which will not. What advice does Dr. Gottman have to offer? Next are some of his top suggestions on how to keep your marriage strong. Seek help early. The average couple waits six years before seeking help for marital problems. And keep in mind, half of all marriages that end do so in the first seven years. This means the average couple lives with unhappiness for far too long. Edit yourself. Couples who avoid saying very every angry thought when discussing touchy topics are consistently the happiest. Soften your startup. Arguments first start up because a spouse sometimes escalates the conflict from the get-go by making a critical or contemptuous remark in a confrontational tone. Accept influence. A marriage succeeds to the extent that the husband can accept influence from his wife. If a woman says, quote, Do you have to work Thursday night? My mother is coming that weekend and I need her help getting ready, unquote. And her husband replies, quote, My plans are set and I am not changing them, unquote. This guy is in a shaky marriage. A husband's ability to be persuaded by his wife rather than vice versa is so crucial because research shows women are already well practiced at accepting influence from men, and a true partnership only occurs when a husband is able to do so as well. Have high standards. Happy couples have high standards for each other, even as newlyweds. The most successful couples are those who, even as newlyweds, refuse to accept hurtful behavior from one another. The lower the level of tolerance for bad behavior in the beginning of a relationship, the happier the couple is down the road. Learn to repair and exit the argument. Successful couples know how to exit an argument. Happy couples know how to repair the situation before an argument gets completely out of control. Successful repair attempts include changing the topic to something completely unrelated, using humor, stroking your partner with a caring remark, quote, I understand that this is hard for you, unquote, making it clear you're on common ground, quote, this is our problem, unquote, backing down in marriage as in the martial art Aikido, you have to yield to win, and in general, offering signs of appreciation for your partner and his or her feelings along the way. Quote, I really appreciate and want to thank you for, unquote. If an argument gets too heated, take a 20-minute break and agree to approach the topic again when you're both calm. Focus on the bright side. In a happy marriage, couples make at least five times as many positive statements to and about each other and their relationship, quote, we laugh a lot, unquote, as opposed to negative ones, quote, we never have fun, unquote. A good marriage must have a rich climate of positivity. Make deposits to your emotional bank account. 12 Steps to Better Marital Communication To flourish, a marriage needs careful attention to good communication. If you find frustration, disappointment, distance, or disinterest building in your marital relationship, the problem is likely to be in failed communications. Such problems need prompt attention before they cause serious damage or grow beyond repair. Here are some straightforward steps to improve marital communication. For success in your marriage, they are best practiced regularly. Set aside special time to talk about each other and your relationship. It's important to talk on a regular basis, at least weekly, without distractions. Listen to your partner by giving your full attention and contemplating what he or she has said before responding. Check out your perceptions of what your partner has said. 
Try to understand your partner's perceptions and feelings, even though they may be different from your own. Never assume what your partner is thinking. Trying to read minds is dangerous to all relationships. Ask for feedback. Check out your assumptions. Ask, quote, are you feeling that, unquote. Never assume that your partner knows what you want, think, or feel. Assumptions like this lead often to disappointment or unnecessary frustration. You must express yourself for your partner to know about your interests. When discussing a matter on which you disagree, it's important to get a good grasp on your partner's feelings and perceptions before advancing your own position. Communicate honestly your concerns about your relationship, but avoid accusing or blaming statements. Blaming statements usually begin with, quote, you, unquote, as opposed to expressions of concern, which are more likely to begin with, quote, I, unquote, and describe your feelings or experiences. If you have very strong, if you have especially strong feelings about a concern, you may wish to practice expressing them before talking with your partner. For example, use a tape recorder and listen to yourself first. Keep in mind that assigning blame rarely solves a problem. What you're after is understanding and solution. If you feel under attack or find yourself discussing past hurts, you and your partner are probably off track and not listening to each other. Stick to the present misunderstanding. Slow down and try to understand each other's experiences and positions on the particular concern being discussed. Be clear about your needs and priorities without being either inflexible or feeling like you must always give in. It's important that both of you can sometimes say no and have that accepted. Equitable relationships where differences can be acknowledged are usually the most successful and satisfying. Do things regularly that you know your partner appreciates and will show your partner that you care about him or her. Be positive in your communication with your partner. Let him or her hear frequently about things you appreciate. Include humor or playfulness in your routine. Surprises and humor are wonderful icebreakers as tension has developed between you. Touch as much as you are comfortable with, as this non-verbally communicates caring and support. Touching each other when one of you is upset can help dissolve tension and make talking about an issue feel safer. Touch can communicate that you care and want to work out differences. It's also important that touch not only be a signal for sex. Get help from a psychotherapist or marriage counselor if you find yourself feeling angry, bitter, resentful, or discouraged in relation to your partner over an extended period. Coping constructively with frustration or anger is a natural part of close relationships. But if these become dominant modes of relating, Consider professional help before things get worse.